Okay, welcome back to the second part of Taylor polynomials. Um, if you take a look, we're looking at example two. We're going to approximate uh, f of x equals ln of 1 plus x with a degree 4 uh, Taylor polynomial function. So I've started um, this work on a separate screen just to make it a little bit easier. So um, if you just take a look at that, you can see um, there's your f of x on the left in green and I've taken the first four derivatives of that function. Okay, so take that time to do those first four derivatives. So I'll go kind of slowly through this. Um, so I'm going to just, while you're taking those derivatives, um, think about what you have to do. You have to take the derivatives of that original function then take the um, derivative when x equals 0, so basically substitute 0 in for x for each of those. And then remember, you're approximating with a, a polynomial function, so p of x equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, etc. So then you take the derivative of that. That's always going to be the same if you're using, uh, if you're approximating with a polynomial function. So after a while, you'll sort of have that memorized, that p of 0 is a naught, p, one of, uh, p prime of 0 is a 1, p double prime of 0 is 2a2, and etc. Okay, so remember those coefficients are the derivative factorial. So I'll give you a sec to copy that down. I'm going to set up and try to get my pen ready here. Okay, once you have that, you can pause the video if you need to at any time. Um, now we're going to set them equal to each other. So we remember we want f of zero to equal p of zero. So that means that a sub 0 is actually equal to 0. Then we want f prime of 0 to equal p prime of 0. So that means a sub 1 is 1. Then we want f double prime of 0 to equal f double prime of 0, or sorry, p double prime of 0. So that means 2a2 two two equals negative 1. So a2 equals negative 1 half. Then the next one, so 6a sub 3 equals 2, so a3 equals reduced 1 third, and then 24a sub 4 equals negative 6, so a4 equals reduced negative 1 fourth. So then we can put that into our final polynomial function. Just trying to get this over a little bit. That's going to be p of x equals, so no constant term, so then that's going to be 1x, which is just x, then negative 1 half x squared uh, plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth. So that's a fourth degree Taylor polynomial that approximates f of x equals ln of 1 plus x. If you want to check it out uh, just to see what it looks like, I'm going to show you here. Um, hopefully you can see that. So I went to Desmos. I entered y equals ln of 1 plus x. That's the red function. Then I entered that polynomial approximation. And you can see centered around 0, um, you have essentially the same function. So basically it looks like sort of almost between 0.6 and negative 0.6 uh, for x, it's the same function. So it's when it says centered around 0, it means it's a good approximation around the point where x equals 0. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our document and go back to the next function which is 4 over 1 minus x. Again, I've got a new screen for that. So you can pause this if you need to. 
um, as you're finding the derivatives. So I've got in green on the left, g of x, all the first four derivatives underneath. Then in red, g of 0, and all the derivatives at 0. Then p of x, remember, those are always going to be the same if you're approximating with a polynomial function like that. Um, those derivatives at 0 are all going to be the same. So then, again, I'm going to try to set this up here so I can um, do this at the right. So when I make these 0, so remember, oh, that didn't, well, I'll keep it in blue. So a0 will be equal to 4. And then a1 will also be equal to 4. 2a2 will equal 8. So a2 equals 4 again. Um, 6a3 equals 24. So you'll notice all of these are equal to 4. Okay, a4 equals 96. So a4 equals 4. So our polynomial function here, really, I guess you could factor out if you needed to. Um, but it's going to be p of x equals 4 plus 4x plus 4x squared plus 4x cubed plus 4x to the fourth. Okay, so that, again, you can test that out. Uh, just Google Desmos. It's free. Go on there, enter both of those, and um, you will see that it approximates it. Okay, so let's go back. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we've done those. The bottom it says each time a term is added to the Taylor polynomial, the polynomial does a better job at approximating the function near zero. So all of these are near zero, but it's going to be closer. On Desmos, it gets it looks exactly the same. If we had a um, a more accurate graph, it may not be quite as close to the nearest decimal as you move away from zero, but it's going to get better and better the more um, terms that you get. So if we have an infinite number of terms in the polynomial function, really it becomes um, the Taylor series. So Taylor series goes to infinity is essentially what that means. Okay, so then next page. So this just kind of approximates, or sorry, summarizes what we just did. So the Taylor series generated by f at x equals 0. So let f be a function with the derivatives of all orders throughout some open interval containing 0. Series is shown there. Notice how it's going to infinity. So when you take a look at, see if I can get to the top there, so you can see that you have, um, oops, uh, sorry, let me just erase that and just figuring out this. Um, so I can't quite get to the top there, but you can see the, the infinite symbol at the top of the series notation. So um, you can go on to infinity. So it's also called a Taylor series centered at x equals zero. And so this particular one is special, has a special name, Maclaurin series. So that a Maclaurin series is a Taylor series centered at x equals zero with that definition shown there. You can take a look at your, in your data booklet um, for math HL. It has that in there. Um, it has some for sort of the basic, um, functions that you can approximate. So take a look at your, your data booklet. Partial sum, so that means you're just going to a certain value. So what we just did was a partial sum. Uh, we went to n equals 4. Okay, um, And so that's a Taylor polynomial of order uh, n. Sometimes uh, when we approximate, we just remember order is like the degree. Okay. Um, so sometimes for different approximations, we might, um, given a different series, you might not need to go that far if there's an x squared in it, for example. 
So if we look down here, um, sometimes we might want a series that approximates a function at a different value other than zero. So what then? Well, you remember back to Math 30-1 where you did uh, transformations. Sometimes it's easier than others. We're going to keep it pretty straightforward. Um, so if you're asked to approximate, uh, say, at x equals 2, then you're going to do that transformation. Remember back to Math 30-2, you replaced x with x minus 2 if you wanted to move it to the right two units. And so that's essentially what you're doing. You can see that x minus, um, you know, let me see if I can get over there. I'm not sure if I can, but um, here you can see the x minus a. So that's moving it to the right, however, the value of a. So we're now going to look at constructing a Taylor series for f of x equals e to the x at x equals 2. Now, this is a, kind of an easier one in some sense uh, because I just got to go over here um, because the derivative of e to the x is always e to the x. So we've got f of x equals e to the x and we've got f prime of x equals e to the x and f double prime of x equals e to the x. Okay, and so it doesn't say what degree to go to. We'll keep it like the last one. So take the fourth derivative. So then when we now are centered at x equals 2, that means we're going to replace x with 2. So that's going to be e squared. And then each one of these is going to be e squared. Okay, and then... Um, in terms of our Taylor uh, series, when we are um, finding our polynomial, so remember, we know that um, we let a1 equal the value of f of 2, and a2 would be the value of f of 2, and then we'd have um, uh, 3, sorry, 2 a3 would equal e squared. So that means, oh, uh, just got to go back here. That's going to be 2a2 equals e squared. So that means a2 equals 1 half e squared. I forgot a naught. So a naught equals e squared. And then here, I'm just going to uh, delete this. So it's going to be 6a. 3, so let's get this back. Um, so let's, it's going to be 6, A3. So A3 equals 1, 6, E squared. Um, off the grid there, just a sec. There we go. Okay. Um, and we can keep on going. So um, if we were to write out our polynomial, we'd have e squared plus e squared, and then it would be x minus 2. And then we'd have e squared over 2. You can just combine that um, to be x multiplied by x minus 2 squared and etc. You can fill that in. So in terms of summation notation, we'd have n equals 0. If we went to infinity, then we're going to have e squared and then x minus 2 to the n and then over, remember, over n factorial. Okay. So let's just go down here. We're almost done. So, um, yeah, just a reminder um, that there's a list of some of the most useful Maclaurin series on four, page 491 of your textbook and also in your data booklet. Okay, so that sort of ends off. In Schoology, you probably find an older version. I'm going to update uh, the notes um, because um, 
they did have a, a further example, but can put the sort of results on that. So that's the end of this. Our next lesson is looking at the basically the error that occurs between an approximated function and the actual one. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video coming in two days, I think. Thanks.